today we are going to discuss another problem D, all right? So it's posted by a dash again. And uh, its ranking is 1800, so it's quite difficult. So as always, we are going to introduce this problem by explaining the example here, all right? So here is the example. Right, so uh, we have a, a number here which indicates how many numbers are going to be in the following array. Right, so three numbers are going to be the uh, array. And uh, what are we going to do with these three numbers? So first step, we are going to transform them into binary um, forms, all right? So 1 becomes 001, 2 becomes 010, 3 becomes 011, all right? So the second step is we choose an x. So uh, we can choose any number for this x, right? So we just uh, choose 011 as an example here. Right, so the x is also in binary form, right? So the third step is to calculate the xor results between uh, each of these numbers and uh, x, right? So what's the uh, xor result uh, of the first number? So let's calculate it. So for the first digit, it's the same. So we get a zero here. For the second digit, it's different. So we got one here. For the third digit, it's the same. We got a zero here, right? So let's move on. Calculate the second XOR result. So the first digit is different. So it's one. The second digit is the same, so it's zero. The third is the same, so it's zero. So for the third XOR result, so th these two numbers are the same, so the XOR result is zero, right? So let's move on. The next step is to choose, uh, find out the maximum value of this XO results, right? So obviously is the first number, right? It is the maximum number of these three, right? So we got a maximum result here. So we output it, right? And um, be careful because you can choose any X here. And the only result you can output is the minimal value of the uh, all of the maximal results of all those x. All right, you can choose any x here, and you will get a lot of maximal results. Right, you need to output the minimal one. Right, so it uh, this. Um, this x here happens to have the minimal maximal result, so we output it here, right? So how do we solve this problem? So first, we are going to uh, introduce a two intu intuitions here, right? So let's see. Um, if all numbers are v at position p, what does it mean? So for example, um, so this is position 1, right? This is position 2. This is position 3. So for position 3 here, uh, we got uh, three zeros at this position, right? So, um, in this case, um, at position 3, all numbers 
are zero, right? So we choose zero as x at position p, right? So we choose zero for x here. Why? Why do we choose zero? Because um, if we choose one here, let's uh, let's see what happens to these three XOR results. At these three positions, they all become one, right? Because one XOR zero equals one, so we have three ones here. So uh, in this way, the maximal result will become one at this position, right? It becomes bigger, so that is not what we want. So that's why we have to choose zero at this position, right? So uh, that is the first intuition. So basically, it tells us that uh, if the uh, the all of the digits are the same at uh, some certain position, we need to choose the same value for the x, and the maximal result here uh, at this position would be zero, right? So let's move on. Uh, what is the second? Um, Let's take a look at the second intuition. So if we choose v as x at a position p, then we don't care those numbers has v at a position p anymore. What does that mean? So for example, at the position 2, we have both 0 and 1 here, right? So in the end, we choose 1 in this place uh, as x, right? So we choose 1 as x at position 2, right? Then we don't care those numbers has 1 at position 2 anymore. So we don't care these two numbers anymore. Why? That is because um, the x or result of these two numbers are zero here, and there are still uh, numbers has zero here, which means the x or result would be uh, one at those positions, right? So in this case, this number, this x or result would surely bigger than these two. Right, because it has one here, this two has zero here, so we don't need to uh, care uh, this this two anymore, because the only thing we care is the maximal result. So these two numbers has no opportunity to become the maximal, so we don't care them anymore. This second uh, intuition is very important for us to reduce the size of this problem, right? So let's move on. Um, let's take a look at the algorithm here. So we solve this problem um, by using, um, let's say, um, divide and conquer algorithm, all right? So each time, we reduce the problem to smaller size. Let's say, uh, so we uh, the super problem we need to solve is uh, is at a position uh, three, right? For uh, for this case, is position three. The leftmost position is position three. So the super problem we need to solve is. Uh, at uh, position 3, and the set, original set, is uh, all those numbers. So in this case, it's uh, three numbers, right? So position 3 and uh, 
uh, the set is a one, two, three, right? And then we break a set into set zero and the set one, right? Based on the number at position P, right? So we take a look at uh, the digits at uh, this position three, right? So all of these digits are zero. So we put uh, all of the three numbers into the set zero, right? So the set 0 has a length of 3, and the set 1 has a length of 0, right? Because there is no um, number started with the 1 here. So uh, set, one is, set 1's length is 0, right? So uh, this condition doesn't hold, so we skip it because Length zero, uh, set zero equals to three, right? So let's take a look at this condition. So if length um, set one equals to zero, we can return the answer of the sub problem, right? So for uh, that is solve uh, p minus one for a set zero, right? So they are the same, right? So instead, we are going to solve this sub um, problem. Why? Why we can reduce this super problem into this sub problem? Because um, as we all know, the set one, uh, the length of set one equals zero, that means we have the same digits at this position, right? So the maximum result at this position should be zero, right? Because we are going to choose zero here. So the maximum, so the x or result will be zero here, which means the maximum result will be zero as well. So uh, we can reduce the, um, we can reduce the super problem into the smaller problem. We don't care this position anymore. And we only care the sub problem, which only has two positions, right? So that's why we can uh, reduce the super problem into the sub problem. And let's move on. So now we are going to um, solve position two and the set with the three numbers, right? So still we are going to break the set into two sets. So this number is in set zero, right? Because the digit at uh, position two is zero. So this number is in set zero. And these two numbers are at uh, set one, right? Because the digit at this position is one. So now we have uh, two non-empty sets. So we skip these two conditions and uh, come to this guy there, right? So what does that mean? What does this mean, right? It means we, uh, in the maximum result, we surely get a one here, right? Why? Because at this position, we got both zero and ones. So no matter what we choose, the XOR result would uh, bo uh, contain both one and zeros and the maximum result would be surely be one, right? Because maximum means the maximum of the XOR results. And the XOR results at this position has both one and zero. So the maximum result would surely be one here, right? So that's why we, um, we had this part in this equation, right? 
we uh, so this part is where we choose zero or one here. So if we choose zero, right, then we don't care s uh, the numbers in s zero anymore, right? So as we discussed before in our second intuition, right? So we only need to solve the sub problem uh, with p minus one and uh, actually we are going to solve the sub problem of p minus one and the set one because we already don't care the set numbers in set zero anymore. So we can uh, uh, reduce the set size to set one, right? And uh, let's discuss uh, another option here, which is we choose uh, one here, right? If we choose one as the uh, x at this position, we don't need to care the numbers in set one anymore, right? So these two numbers, we don't care it anymore. So only we care is about uh, set zero, right? So this is where we uh, reduce the problem into position p minus one and uh, set zero. So as we can see, we have uh, two options uh, for this digit, for this specific digit, and uh, we will choose a better one from these two options, which uh, means we need to uh, use a mean operator here, right? We choose a better answer and uh, uh, plus it into our uh, final answer, right? So that is uh, that is our algorithm, right? So let's look at the code, right? So let's look at the code here. So it's exactly the same as the algorithm described before, all right? So first, we are going to read the N. So nothing surprise here. So then we are going to put all of those numbers into a set, set A, right? And then we will solve the problem from the super, super problem, which starts at the leftmost um, position, from left to right, right? And it starts the, um, the super set, which contains all of the numbers, right? So if we reach the rightmost place, we stop, right? That means that we already find the maximum value, so we stop, right? Uh, and we are, we are going to have two sets here, and we are going to break the superset into two um, two sets based on the uh, digits on this position, right? So here is how we um, uh, choose the set for each number, right? Then we are going to tackle those two special cases where we have the same number at a specific uh, um, position and then we will if there are um, different digits on that position we are going to uh, choose a better solution right so I guess that's it thank you for watching see you next time